Hi, and welcome to RNESU Spotlight. I'm Lori Bertrand, your host and board chair of the Otter Valley Unified Union School District. Today, we're going to be talking about something at Otter Valley about, called Tech Ed. And today, my uh, people who are with me today, isn't that awful? The people who are with me today are Jean <laughs> Collins, superintendent of schools, okay. and our new Tech Ed instructor, Devin Karpak. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so, for having me. Yeah. So, Tech Ed. Something we've never talked about on our NESU Spotlight, so we're really excited that you're here. I'm happy to be here. So our tech ed uh, instructor retired at the end of last year, and so you started this fall. Mm -hmm. And so can you tell us how, um, what brought you to us? So um, my background is everything from a little bit of construction to welding to I guess a little bit of mad science too. Um, I started out my career after high school going to WyoTech doing automotive and street rod there. Um, went into the field of welding and fabrication and construction, built gasification plants and um, docks and um, awnings and a bunch of other things. Worked on, auto on cars, did some fabrication work, uh, worked with uh, several people on excavating and construction and houses. and. <clears throat> After a little bit of time, I returned to school, did, did my undergrad, and uh, out of that, it was, it was one of those self-explorations and where do my interests and passions lie, and it came down to really helping students and kids find what engages them in their pathway to a future that's both engaging and fulfilling and in, hopefully in a high-wage um, position. So that brings me to career in tech ed and design in tech ed. Um, so, I started teaching welding and fabrication and also taught forestry and natural resources and uh, along with some other side projects and um, when I saw that this position was open, um, I jumped at it because I love being in this area and um, actually my mother was on the staff at Otter Valley um, <laughs> back in the late 90s. So um, knowing Jim Avery and hearing all the good things about Gene and the district, um, I didn't think there was any better place for me to, you know, it's a, in essence, come home to. <laughs> awesome. That is a great story. What, what, um, what is design and tech ed? So, what does that mean? Yeah, so design and tech ed is that whole end-to-end -end process where you, you go from idea or dream, um, learning the skills to convey that both through um, written and, and physical uh, manifestations, either uh, drawing using computer-aided uh, drafting or um, or some type of other drawing and then the skills to actually create that thing and, and make it functional. So it's a process and much like any learning process it can be broken down into um, right now I have middle school and high school students and the middle school is kind of exploring the world and then moving into high school it's honing those skills and, and seeing where they apply to possibly their futures. You teach middle and high school now? Yes I do. Do they have the same curriculum? Can you talk a little bit about some of what each of them do? So they do share some of their um, their projects. Uh, it's it's been kind of fun because you put a little bit of a twist on things. Um, this guy actually here. Um, we're and what is that? This is a widget. <laughs> so <laughs> those are. Honestly, I'm really excited widget. to know what a widget <laughs> is because in cost accounting we always talked about how many widgets can we make, and now I know what one is. And I always tell you at budget time we don't make widgets, but apparently we do. So the idea behind it is is it's a fundamental the the fundamental skills of measuring and tool use and ensuring that students have the ability to use those things to create something. And the idea was to actually remove the, the, the pressure of, oh my god, my box isn't quite right or my shelf is a little bit askew um, by taking that, that little bit of pressure off of them and trying to build something that, that's pure. Mm -hmm. um, it's about the measuring. It's about the, the following mm -hmm. the, of, of a blueprint and finding and applying the skills that they have. And do um, they do that in both middle school and high school? So yeah, the middle schoolers um, have a different version of this. It looks fundamentally the same, but um, it's using uh, wood that comes directly, fr directly from uh, a hardware store. This is actually, this one is a high school version of it. Mm -hmm. um, and they actually had to mill that uh, oh. piece of rough cut down to um, a finished dimension, um, and then further construct what you see there. And it, it'll evolve as uh, hopefully I'm uh, uh, over the years, um, and it pr might actually turn back to being more like a box or a little mm -hmm. shelf or something. Mm -hmm. um, cool. hmm. 
So um, middle school, high school, um, every day, is, is it, um, how do they see you? So um, I see students every other day. Um, so I always have, excuse me. So I, I have students every other day. So um, I have essentially two groups of high school level um, ted, tech ed, which is um, delineated as, as woodworking or wood shop. Um, so they're more focused on those skills. And then my middle schoolers are, they're kind of in a sampler, an appetizer mm -hmm. stage um, of, of tech ed. So what we've done so far is we've done some tool ID, we've done the widget project, we're in the midst of a space technology project. So we're bringing in the different aspects of, of uh, talking about NASA and Apollo and the space shuttle, so things that actually they, they're you know, 20, 30 years removed from, but also how it's really influenced them and connecting it to um, you know, sneakers and things that came out of the space industry, Velcro, um, these, these um, uh, technologies that are very much omnipresent in their lives, but also um, what, looking to the future and you know, saying, hey, if you're interested in welding, um, actually I have a, a former student that just is finishing up a job in at, actually at SpaceX, um, working on the next generation Starship vehicle. And if they're interested in that, there's a possibility for that at the technician level, um, or if they are more interested in engineering, or even art rendering pictures. So there, there's a path forward for everyone, and really trying to get them excited and thinking that, you know, it's not just for, you know, like being college bound is amazing. Mm -hmm. Being apprenticeship bound is amazing. Everyone has value. and all the things that we're experiencing will just make that that much richer. I know that this is your first year, and so yep. you've only been at Outer Valley for a few months, but what's your vision for this program? Where would you like to take it? So um, going back to kind of that appetizer sampler idea, <laughs> um, is that's kind of it. Um, part of it is making sure that kids are able to see the world um, from our little part and see the rest of it. So seeing, if again, go back to that, uh, a little bit of engineering, a little bit of, of more trade-oriented stuff. So right now the classes, we're, as I said, we're offering is a middle school, 7th and 8th um, course, and then also a wood woodworking course. Where I'd like to see it go is um, a distinct 7th and 8th grade class where you can take one or both because it is an elective. Um, and then in the high school year, continue having the woodworking class, spin off one of those sections into potentially a more trade oriented, so we do a little bit of plumbing. Um, right now we're actually in the current uh, format, we're doing a um, wall framing project where they're learning how to wire an outlet, um, a, cool. a switch and, and a light um, in a, in a um, properly framed wall that they're, that they're building. Um, so f spinning that off into its independent class and add a little bit of plumbing and things like that. And then also the, the one that I'm really hoping we can get off the ground for next year is actually a CAD CAM unit. And CAD is computer aided drafting or computer assisted drafting and CAM is computer aided manufacturing. And the program that we're looking at um, actually, which is awesome for the budget, is free. <laughs> Um, <laughs> woo, woo, we like uh, that. It's so. called Fusion 360. Um, it's a 3D modeling program, oh. and what it allows you to do is um, model in three dimensions. So this actually, the print that they got, we used a um, program called Google SketchUp to actually mm -hmm. represent that. And by virtue of doing that, it was actually a, another free program through Google <laughs> and the state. Um, and that program is, is actually available if the kids would like to use it at home, huh. which is one of the really cool things. Um, we're ho I'm hoping to get into a little bit of that towards the end of the semester um, as, as we go into an independent project with the kids. Um, but that CAD CAM unit um, would be based on that program, and then what we would be doing is they'd be rendering pieces and either working with um, a local machine shop, possibly the Mint here in Rutland, Stafford, um, whoever, whoever would like to partner with us, um, actually cutting those, or possibly um, looking at potentially some type of investment in, in machinery of our own. I've got a few options. Um, Let's follow up on that for a second. Yeah. So you talked about partnering with um, some of the community mm -hmm. businesses, and I know that that was something that you wanted to bring to Otter Valley. What's your, what are you doing to engage the community, or what are you planning to do, because it's only been a couple months. Right, ago. so far, um, we had a community um, night, they called it an advisory night, 
um, where we had about 13 members from the community, one who owns a CNC shop um, locally. CNC. A computer numeric control, um, which is essentially what, what um, ha so uh, lathes and mills um, are now, like they're still manually operated, but to increase precision, um, we, that CAD CAM um, program yeah. setup is, is now translated into um, being used mainly with um, a, 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 a computer-controlled uh, mill or lathe, and it actually allows for extreme control and extreme precision for medical devices and things like that, um, which is actually what this gentleman does. Um, we had, um, new, uh, let's see, I believe someone from uh, New England Woodcraft, um, represented from Stafford, uh, the uh, AGC, which is the Associated General Contractors, um, uh, Advanced Welding Institute in, of in Burlington, um, uh, GMP, I believe, no, Velco, excuse me. Um, so it, it was a really good cross section nice. Nice. of people. We had, as we had about, so they came into the program and yep. met so with we, you. And yeah. So we had about 13 of those. I did a presentation on um, kind of where the program is, talking about where we want to go. Um, offering those uh, additional courses. They gave some feedback, and I think one of the next big steps, actually, um, I can come up with those ideas all day long, um, and is actually asking the kids where they'd like to go, <laughs> and seeing where um, the ideas of the adults and the businesses meet um, where the kids would like to, to investigate. Mm -hmm. And True. I think that's one of the things that um, I'm gonna work on over the next couple of weeks, is actually getting a survey out to the students and see like interest over the long term. Like a couple of things like we can do, as I said, the CAD CAM course would be a fairly easy lift um, mm -hmm. for next year. Um, all things um, uh, considering, uh, um, excuse me, considered, um, but also more long term because you know potentially th there is an amazing space that is our tech ed shop um, and by virtue of possibly adding some welding equipment, uh, which actually would be going back um, mm -hmm. to the roots of Tech Ed at Otter Valley, um, and maybe possibly adding that, or maybe something with small engines, but I think some of that's gonna be dictated, as you said, by the kids, mm -hmm. as well as input from the businesses and seeing where they intersect. Mm -hmm. Have you heard anything from the kids so far about how they're taking to this? Um, it, it's, it's been one of the, for, on the teaching side, um, uh, <laughs> representing the, um, it's been amazing to watch the growth through some of this stuff. Is that some of the kids have not had the opportunity to fail and then try again. Sure. Mm -hmm. And grit and determination that is growing out of it um, has been extremely rewarding. So going f going from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're, they're, they're enjoying it. I think they're enjoying a little bit different of, of an approach. Um, I think I, I've really, even the kids that, that, are, that are struggling with some of this stuff, it's been a pleasure to see them come in after, after school, before school, um, and see their growth. One of the fabulous things I think about design and tech ed is that when kids are sitting in a math class or a social studies class or they're, they're learning things, um, it's, it's almost theoretical or worksheet paper type. I mean, it's, you know, yep. they come in your class and if you don't know fractions by now, you're going to have to learn it in here. Um, you know, if you don't know measurement, you're going to have to learn. I mean, it's, it's very applied learning. Oh, Can yeah. you show us some of what your kids have done? So yeah, so, so. Besides widgets? Yes, besides widgets. Yeah, don't close that one. Um, get to that. <laughs> so, so, so far we've got, um, as I said, we're in the middle of a few things um, right now, and bringing a four-foot wall in probably would be a little bit of an awkward lift. But um, one of the gifts of coming into this program has been that, un unfortunately, um, a few years ago, uh, Vermont Tubs and Brandon closed. But we've got a lot of a lot of things came to us from them, and also my understanding is that there were also some donations of some really beautiful hardwood that was rough sawn. So I've got this complement of stuff that really hasn't been touched in probably ten or fifteen years, and this actually so this is kind of a butcher block s cutting board. So this was a comp what what we call the competency. Um, what the students did is they had to use the um, table saw compound miter saw, 
bandsaw, drill press, um, and also to get this um, routed edge. Heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hardwood. Yeah, it's real. It's hardwood, really, yeah. And, really smooth. And then sand the whole thing and treat it. It's actually with a food grade. Right, because you have to treat uh, yep. it because you can't just throw nope. food on this. Um, so yeah. it, that that's one that's going to go home and probably be yeah. used. So yeah. they both demonstrated competency. So it's kind of, kind of um, a little bit to the concept of see one, do one, teach one almost. Yeah. So I went around, showed them how to use it. This was kind of them showing me how to use it, and then this guy, which was actually came after for the high schoolers, was, okay, hands off from the instructor, obviously still watching and making sure that they're yeah. safe and doing the right thing, but by virtue of them taking a solid piece of rough, rough sawn lumber and then having to get down to three quarter inch, which is the standard size for a one, one inch by whatever dimensional piece of lumber. So it's kind of, there's this <coughs> kind of ecosystem I'm trying to develop that each project builds into the next one. Um, so we've got a couple different styles. Yeah, those are beautiful. And, and the other thing is that this is a learning experience for me to, well, not to a certain extent, it is. Because originally, it was, this was a conversation with the students. Mm -hmm. This wasn't, hey, um, originally it started out with, hey, you need to show me how to use the equipment. We're going to use scrap. And I was like, do you guys want to build cutting boards? Instead of being like, oh, yeah, they were like, yeah, let's do that. So they not only had a say in their education in terms of that, but they, as you can see, the difference between some of them, wood right. choice, um, style. So it, it's very unique and individualistic. Like, and in, you can see these are about inch, inch and a half. And then we have kind of more of a cheese board-esque one. And I would put any of these up for sale mm -hmm. um, at any of the Vermont product stores because cool. they all have done such a great job. And what is this sitting in front of Lori? Uh, so that's one of the... <laughs> My assistant. That was it good timing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is not sentient. Um, so that is a robot. Um, I don't know if that's the one the kids put together or the one I put together for the demo, but... Um, it looks like a Lego toy. It is. So it's the uh, Lego EV. It, it very much is. Um, it's a Lego EV3 platform. Um, this one is actually on loan from the uh, Brandon Rec Department. Bill Moore helped us out with this. Huh. Um, and oh, check it out. There, this this platform is a, a, amazing. There is a uh, organization called First Lego League. Uh, excuse me, First Robotics, and they've got different levels of competitions. Wow. And one of the things we're hoping to do. Um, so this will be eventually this semester, next semester. Um, a project for the kids to do. Uh oh. <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> what did I do? What did I do? You woke it up. Um, don't worry. They're, they're, it's, not as, it's not as bad as Arnold. <laughs> um, um, though we could name it that. It'd be good. <laughs> um, but so they're, they can be operated either using a remote on your phone um, or they can be uh, actually programmed to run autonomously huh. um, oh. and complete tasks. And actually, I coach um, a couple teams. Um, and as uh, through um, First Lego League, and actually there'll be a competition on December eighth, wow. and hopefully next year we'll be able to get something like that going in our in, in the supervisory fabulous. union. Right. Um, and it's it's a great program because it's not only it's not only talking about Legos; it's socially minded too, mm. solving problems and making yeah. sure that you're a, com a, a member of a community. So I know that you're opening up the shop beyond the yeah. classes you're offering. Talk a little bit about that. Um, this one, this one, because I. I, I um, made a so if we go to the computer just for a little bit and this what you're going to show us is your web page on the Otter Valley right. School website right right so this web page um, is a chance to oh, I guess it won't zoom out but anyway <laughs> um, this web page is a chance to kind of communicate with the with the kids and the community um, to really give them a way to not only see what they've done, but also make sure that if they miss something, they're able to get, get those things. So everything I've, I've given the kids and some of the stuff I haven't is all on this web page. Um, hmm. And I already apologize to the English teachers for the grammatical errors that, that, <laughs> that are included. Um, so uh, give me a saw any day, um, but that thesaurus 
well, the thesaurus is fine. I like the thesaurus. So um, we, the, the district has a grant that um, I'm helping with. And um, our first thing that we're doing is from 4.30 to, oh, excuse me, from 2.30 to 4.30 um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, except for next week. Uh, today, um, I've got- We're not coming in on Thanksgiving? We're not coming in on Thanksgiving. Um, Good to note. Uh, I'll be letting the cranberry sauce settle um, <laughs> in the appropriate <laughs> places. Uh, but this is going to be a chance for students and faculty and, um, and staff to interact in a new way. We're gonna have some curated pro projects um, where students will be able to, free of charge, um, you know, if they want to build a shelf, if they want to build a cutting board, they'll have access to those things. There'll be a little safety training if they haven't been through tech ed before. Um, and the same thing for the adults. Um, we want to make sure all of our math teachers still can count to 10 with their fingers. Um, <laughs> and um, to, again, it, it, some of it's about that social aspect mm -hmm. of it, putting students and teachers together in a different light. Right. Um, but also giving... Creativity, yeah. design. Uh, without the fear of failure because there is none yeah cool it's fabulous and then um, I'm gonna start meeting with a few of the uh, uh, other schools and seeing if we can get some other things going um, in the tech head realm um, but now you for the makerspace did did I hear you just got a 3d printer we're working you're on working it. on it. Um, there's one or two little hiccups um, because the one I wanted to get is is um, uh, actually self, partially self-replicating, so not, not, to, not to make the machines taking over everything, um, <laughs> but uh, the idea is that when, again, budget, uh, keeping uh, price down because some of the pr plastic parts can be printed from the first one. Oh, and wow. then Ooh. what you do is, um, yeah, well, in probably That's five, to, five <laughs> to 10 years, uh, I would say we're, we'll be moving towards uh, probably three-quarter replication is wow. self-replication because we're already able to so like SpaceX right now um, the uh, Dragon version 2 which is the capsule they'll be taking they'll be taking astronauts to the International Space Station um, within the next three to four months the um, th Boosters on that uh, the, the, the are called Super Draco. They're actually a 3d printed uh, really? um, wow. motor yeah, so we're able to pr print metal, we're able to print plastic, it's just now integrating those things and then figuring out how to put circuitry between them. Wow. So, but, so th yeah. We like to be cutting edge. I know, right? <laughs> I know. But yeah, so working on that, um, and um, that'll get, that again will be open to students during the class and also outside using um, SketchUp and actually one of the things with SketchUp that I, I'm really hoping that we get to do soon is there's actually a statewide competition um, that will, uh, it, this is a great opportunity to collaborate with the history department, um, mm -hmm. is actually you find buildings, with, it's called 3D Vermont, um, mm -hmm. you find buildings that um, are historically significant within your community, you represent them, and then there's a statewide competition for presentations and stuff like wow. that. Oh, um, so cool. that's one of the other things we're looking at, and also um, talking with local people, um, uh, there's a possibility of offering a, a tech ed oriented class, um, or possibly an after school um, offering where we're looking at one of the early um, Motors. It was a DC motor, and actually, the first mm -hmm. DC motor in the world was actually created in Forestdale. Mm -hmm. um, it's wow. called the Davenport motor, um, and I've been working with a local gentleman, um, possibly to see if we could offer uh, kind of an, not the alternative, but a, a, an alternative pathway um, that takes tech ed, math, and, and history and kind of meshes them together. But that's another possibility. Yeah. And they're all, everything's on the table. Um, mm -hmm. Just talking to the administration, talking to you guys, mm -hmm. talking to the kids, seeing where things fall. And, and what makes the most sense to give them the best opportunity for success. Fabulous. That's a great program. And you said really? that you were going to talk to the other schools. You mean the younger students yes. at Rutland Northeast? Yep. So we're trying to, um, it's just me and I'm doing as much as I can, <laughs> but, but um, meeting with them, seeing if, like, um, we also have, awkwardly standing up, um, <laughs> this is going to be actually one of our next projects. This is an Estes rocket kit. And um, this, is, this is the culminating project for the, um, space unit we're doing right now. The kids are going to have a chance. They can either put it together the way it is, or if they want to, get a little extra balsa wood and a little bit extra glue. They can try something crazy. 
maybe throw some wings or something on there and see what see what happens. Um, but actually, we, we were talking today um, because there was a rocket um, test bed failure um, down in Texas uh, la yesterday, and they're just like, wait, they, they spent all this money and it failed. It's like, no, they learned things, mm -hmm. and and that's one of the things is that like we do look towards success and and then figuring that out, but you know, try and try again. Right. Yeah. 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 That's really fabulous. I, I'm really excited about the future of the design and tech program at Otter Valley and where it can expand in the maker space, you know, maybe we open it up even further yeah. uh, beyond the school to the community. Um, but it, the, these are skills that kids really need to have in today's market, being able to problem solve, work together, design, try and fail and try and fail and failing is okay. So. I think it's fabulous. Well, this is a great program just because it allows you to get hands-on. Mm -hmm. Like you said, right. you know, the other academics are, are theory-based. This is get it, touch it, feel it, you yep. know, work with it, figure out where you went wrong or what you need yep. to do differently. Um, kids must really be enjoying it. It's not just like, oh, what job, you know? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> so, think, I think so, so far. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. It, I'm absolutely energy, sure. I'm sure. It, it, it's funny though sometimes because it's like when we come back in from the shop, they're like, "Wait, why are we back in here?" <laughs> like, uh, like because it, it is a little bit. There is a bit. There is a bit of theory and a, a bit of discussion. So sure. with the rocket yeah. stuff, we have been in the classroom a little bit, and they're all chomping at the bit and looking forward to, yeah, to getting out to. Um, make sure we don't accidentally put them on the roof. Uh. <laughs> but I appreciate too that you are reaching out to the community and, and you know we have some kids interning in the community yep. and your connections along with um, the school's connections, I can really see some kids taking off with some of the skills that they're learning in your class. Hope and if so. not, you know, when I put together my IKEA furniture, I sure wish I had your <laughs> class. <laughs> That's the extent of my, my talents there. It's called the Her Doll. <laughs> <laughs> I love the IKEA names for stuff. Well, yeah, when you know, can make right? some uh, outdoor furniture for outside so that you can sit down outside of Otter Valley and some of those Adirondack chairs or something. There you go. Yeah, that's you know, of actually, course, those would disappear. We're that's about. One, actually one of the things I think we're going to target for the maker space is, is being able to have oh. access to making some Adirondack chairs. Because oh. they're a fun thing. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. like, you use them. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, it's great when you can really see the purpose and, and, and the payoff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And thank you for keeping the budget as low as possible by finding grants and free software. I'm, I'm trying my best. I know. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you very much for being here with us today. This has been a great way to showcase what Otter Valley is doing. And um, to think only a couple of years ago, we were thinking about cutting tech ed. So this is a great way to show us that we made why the right decision, why well. it's alive and well. So we really appreciate that. Yeah. And we want to thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you next time on RNESU Spotlight. Thanks.